So we can use this uh, loop of rope to kind of model what happens inside a real electric circuit. Now we can, uh, effectively again, I'm going to be the uh, power source. I'm just going to hold this in my hand, so I'm going to be the one who's actually moving the rope. And what I'd like you to do is just take the other end and you're going to be a resistor. Okay, so a fixed resistor um, should have a constant resistance. Now, if you hold it fairly, with your hand sort of fairly open, that means there's not much resistance to the movement of this rope. Now, in the other video when I talked about current and charge, effectively current is a bit like the rate of rope that's moving through your hand, so the amount of rope going through your hands per second, and the charge transferred is actually the total amount of rope that's kind of moved through your hands. Well, now we're going to be looking at something else. We're going to be looking at the two things that really affect that electric current. Okay, now basically, um, the amount of rope that goes through your hands, well, that really depends on two things. It depends on the amount of effort that I'm putting in. So if I put in more effort to move this round, then in a second, more rope is going to go through your hands. Okay, and we call this potential difference in electric circuits. So effectively, the bigger the potential difference, the greater the current that's going to be flowing. Effectively, if I put more effort in, more current's going to flow. If I got somebody to help me and they were going to be a cell as well, so I'm kind of representing the cell here. If I had two cells and we were both kind of pulling or pushing this rope through your hands, there'd be more going through each second. So if you have a greater potential difference, you have a greater current flowing in that circuit. But again, I said you're a resistor, and a resistor has a fixed resistance that we measure in ohms. Now, if we maybe go from a light resistance to a heavier resistance, and you kind of just kind of grab onto that rope a bit harder, if I put in the same amount of effort, and you suddenly hold onto that rope a lot tighter, there's going to be less rope that goes through your hands each second. So effectively, when you grab on tighter, there's a greater resistance. Now, the rope is still getting through. It doesn't stop it all. But again, if you have a greater resistance, we then have a smaller current that actually flows. And so what we then find is that there's this relationship, that the current I depends upon the potential difference, which is V, divided by the resistance actually of that component, which is R. So we can use that way to actually think about what's happening to a circuit as we look into a little bit more detail at both potential difference, which is also known as voltage, and the resistance R. So I think that this is one of the most useful equations when it comes to looking at electrical circuits. Potential difference is equal to current times resistance. And uh, basically what we do is we use the symbol V to represent potential difference which is why uh, it's also known as voltage. Uh, some exam boards call it voltage all the time. Other ones, you know, including AQA, call it potential difference. But voltage and potential difference are the same thing. Now the current, it's the intensity of current, so that's capital I, and resistance is capital R. So this equation here, V equals IR, is just something that you need to remember. Now the units for this, we actually measure the potential difference V in the unit of V, which stands for the volt. Uh, current is measured in amps, which is a capital A, and then resistance, um, it's measured in ohms. And we actually use a Greek letter called omega, so it's this kind of weird shape here, so that's an omega, um, and that's because we measure resistance in ohms. Now that is a really useful form of the equation, but there's two other ways that we can write it. The first thing I'm going to do is make I the subject, so I is going to be equal to V divided by R. That's really important because basically this tells us about the amount of current that's going to flow in the circuit. If you have a bigger potential difference, a bigger oomph pushing it forward, then that means you're going to have a bigger current. So what we can say there is that the current is going to be proportional to the potential difference. Provided you had the same resistor in that circuit, you double the voltage, you're going to double the current. But also it means that I is proportional to 1 over R. What that means is, again, maybe for the same value of potential difference, the bigger the resistor, the bigger the resistance of that circuit, the less current is going to be moving around it. So that's one really useful way of thinking about it. The other useful way of thinking about it is I'm going to make R the subject to say that the resistance is equal to V divided by I. And in actual fact, this is what our definition of resistance is. The resistance of a component is really equal to the potential difference across it divided by the current that flows through it. 
So this is going to come up all the time and really the best way to get used to this and actually using it in real examples is to do as many practice questions as possible. Remembering that sometimes V equals IR is a useful way of thinking about it. Um, we can use that I is equal to V over R which really explains a lot more about it which is why I started the video by talking about the relationship between the current, the potential difference in the resistance, and then finally our actual definition of resistance, what this resistance and electrical resistance really is, it's just the ratio of the potential difference to the current across or in that component.